Hello, everyone, and welcome. I am Jitu Patel. I'm the EVP of the security and collaboration business at Cisco. And look, I'd like to start by thanking the Enterprise Connect team for inviting me here today to talk to you about a topic that all of you are so actively thinking about, and that is the future of work. And we have some really exciting stuff to share with you today. And so what I'd like to do over the next few minutes is talk to you about two specific things. First is the macro trends that we as an industry are facing and the enormous opportunity it presents to us as a society collectively. And secondly, I'd also like to share with you some of the innovations that we've been busy with at Cisco so that it helps us all better imagine what the future of work could actually look like. Now, one of the reasons we're so excited about the future of work is because it's an opportunity to empower 3 billion digital workers on the planet, a billion of whom are knowledge workers and 2 billion are frontline and field workers, to be able to equally participate in a global economy, regardless of their geography or language preference or personality type or tech proficiency level. Because in our view, opportunity is pretty unevenly distributed throughout the planet, but human potential is not. And so we believe that technology can fundamentally level the playing field in this particular area. Now, one of the questions we get asked a lot is, what does the future of work actually look like? Now, we believe that the future of work is definitively going to be hybrid. Sometimes people will choose to work from home. Sometimes they're going to choose to go into the office. And sometimes they're going to be somewhere in the middle. Now, the interesting thing about hybrid work is that in many more ways, it's more complex than when everyone worked in the office or when everyone post-pandemic started working at home. Now, there's no question that we're not going to go back to the way things were before the pandemic. And studies that we've seen uh, results of, we've seen that the 77% of the employees will embrace a flexible working style. In fact, they'll choose to embrace a, a flexible working style. And 98% of all meetings will include at least one remote participant. Now, as a result, what's happening is video usage has grown 350% compared to pre-pandemic levels. However, while there are 110 million meeting rooms and classrooms around the world, only 6.4% of them are video enabled. This means there's a massive opportunity to address this disconnect. And this is just the start of the challenge because we also need to do a better job at equipping employees to work from home, on the road, and in the field in multiple different ways. Now, hybrid work represents a massive shift in how we all think about work itself, not just about how we collaborate, but how we think about work itself. It's truly a cross-functional undertaking that's in a joint effort between IT and HR and facilities within an organization. Now, IT teams are going to be thinking about the significant technology changes and the tech stack enhancements that they have to make to manage and support their organization. And HR and people teams are going to be thinking about the impact of hybrid work on culture and employee well-being and recruiting and retention and team dynamics and so much more. And facilities teams are completely reimagining the physical workspace itself. They're thinking about how people will work when they're in the office. They're thinking about how offices are configured to optimize the experience, not just for the people physically in the office, but also for those not in the office. Because remember, 98% of the people of, of meetings will have at least one person that's not physically in the same place. So literally, every department and line of business in the organization is thinking through the implications of hybrid work. Now, hybrid work cannot be addressed with software alone, as we all know. Organizations are fundamentally rethinking work at its core. Everything from the office spaces to employee well-being to security. In a world where each of us are now part-time network and security administrators at home. So solving for this is going to require new thinking around the interplay of networking and security and collaboration software and devices. So the next question you might ask is, what does it take to be successful in a hybrid work environment? And we believe from the conversations we've had with customers that organizations should focus on five key characteristics as they adapt to a new hybrid work reality. It should be flexible, inclusive, supportive, secure, and managed. Now, let me explain the importance of each one of these characteristics and also share some examples of innovations that we've been busy making in Cisco to support our customers. Let's start with flexibility. Now, we know that people, demand, people are demanding choice in when, where, and how they work. 
This means that you need to accommodate a wide spectrum of different work styles and roles and environments, applications and locations in order to attract the very best talent to work for your company. Now it starts by enabling people to collaborate any way they choose without forcing them to switch tools. Now we decided to do this with our own WebEx suite. It's a single application for calling, meetings, messaging, polling, Q&A, events, whiteboarding, and as you'll see in a few minutes, our brand new introduction of async video. Now people also need the flexibility to work productively from anywhere with a consistent experience. And there's all sorts of workspaces that people might use, whether it be a dedicated or shared space at home, a shared office desk, or any type of conference room in, in an office. So to support productivity, we know that truly magical experiences happen when collaboration hardware and software get fused together elegantly, which is why we've also invested so heavily in a wide range of collaboration and calling devices from any workspace scenario. But that alone was not going to be enough. That's why we're working on creating a unified experience across our portfolio of networking devices, sensors, security, products, as well as management dashboards to ensure greater connectivity, performance, safety, and security in every workspace, whether at home, on the road, or in a traditional office building. And in the office, it's clear that there will be more shared desks and workspaces and fewer dedicated desks. Look, I believe hot desking is gonna be a massive trend where different people use the same desk on different days because not everyone's gonna be in the office at the same time. Now, in addition to our headsets and cameras, this is why we've introduced a brand new device called the WebEx Desk Hub, specifically designed to enable hot desking. Just walk up to any open desk and put your smartphone on the desk hub. It instantly recognizes your identity. It will even, even go out and display your family photos. It makes any shared space your personal desk and lets you easily join your next meeting while giving the IT administrator the telemetry to know the utilization rates of the desk as well. Now let's talk about another area that has had a lot of innovation at Cisco and that's calling. Calling is still one of the most important ways that people around the world communicate. It is the backbone of countless business critical workflows across many industries like hospitals or retail or financial institutions and so much more. And cloud calling adoption is growing so fast. In our case, we just reached a significant milestone of hosting 8 billion calls per month. But our customers are telling us that it's important not to treat it as a silo. That's why we've integrated calling directly into the collaboration experience and we enable seamless escalation of voice call into a video meeting. Now, likewise, it's unrealistic to make sure that you can believe that all calling will move to the cloud initially across organizations of all sizes and industries. So what did we do? We continued to invest, giving our customers the most choice in supporting calling across on-premise, cloud, and hybrid deployments. Now, flexibility also means that giving users the ability to use the tools they want. So seamless integration is extremely critical. And we believe in an open and vibrant ecosystem. That's a core principle that we have going forward. So we want to make sure that all the capabilities of WebEx are available through our open APIs and SDKs. Now this allows us to integrate with third-party applications in a bi-directional fashion. Not only can third parties integrate into WebEx experiences, but WebEx can also be embedded into these third-party experiences seamlessly. Now we've pre-built integrations with hundreds of leading SaaS applications and many, many more to come. And our commitment to openness and interoperability with the other collaboration solutions is really strong and will continue to get stronger over time. Now we already support the ability for our hardware to join Zoom and Microsoft meetings. And we just announced plans to provide deeper interoperability between WebEx and Google Meet hardware and collaboration tools. Now, as I mentioned before, hybrid work must be inclusive so that everyone's engaged and no one feels left out or like a second-class participant. You know, inclusivity means that language shouldn't be a barrier for people either. 
and that they're able to communicate effectively with each other, regardless of the language they speak. And that's why WebEx can now translate into 120 different languages in real time to solve exactly that problem. But it's not just about language. Meetings are more valuable when everyone feels included and are part of the conversation. It's important to allow contribution from everyone, even in nonverbal ways. Now, one way we're doing this is with the audience engagement capabilities from our recent Slido acquisition, which we fully integrated into the WebEx suite at this point. So what Slido does is, is it enables real-time attendee participation through capabilities like Q&A and polling. There are dozens of use cases for this, like icebreaker questions and checking the pulse of your team and getting real-time feedback during a meeting. It makes even the largest meetings feel like an intimate conversation. Now, we also know that in a hybrid environment, it's often not possible to have meetings where everyone is present, especially with teams that are distributed across multiple time zones. So asynchronous communications are becoming more and more critical for teams to stay connected while looking after their well-being. So they're not taking calls at 2 in the morning every single day. So that's why we announced our latest addition to the WebEx app suite called Vidcast. It's an easy way to create and share video messages asynchronously. Now, rather than me explaining it to you, let's take a quick look at this demo that the team put together. I think you're going to love it. Hi there, I'm Nikki from the Vidcast team. We built Vidcast for distributed teams like ours, where as we made the shift to hybrid work, we saw a massive spike in meetings, and we found it even more difficult to align calendars across time zones. Instead of waiting days to find time to meet, we wanted to create a tool that would make it easy to record, edit, share videos, and get feedback, helping teams effectively collaborate asynchronously. Let me walk you through an example of how we use Vidcast at Cisco. So I'm going to record a quick vidcast to remind Cisco leaders to use Slido polls in their upcoming team meetings. To record a vidcast, I simply click on the new video button in the top right, adjust my camera, mic, and screen share settings how I want them, and press the start record button. Flip to your content. Hey team, wanted to send a quick reminder to use Slido in your upcoming team meetings and point you to some useful resources. Uh, Slido is integrated with WebEx and is a great way to keep everyone connected and engaged during team meetings and live events while we're all working virtually. If you have any questions, you can post them here. Once I'm done, I simply flip back to the Vidcast tab and press the red stop button. That's it. You'll see a preview of your video and you press yes to save. You'll automatically be redirected to the playback page. From this playback page, I can manage my sharing restrictions, which I can set to public, private, or restrict to a specific domain. Copy the link and share it in whatever tool or application your team uses to collaborate, whether that be email, a team wiki, messaging apps, or top social channels. As my team reviews my vidcast, I can see reactions superimposed on top of the video timeline, giving me a quick snapshot of what moments of the video resonate with my audience. Comments on the right are a great way for me to capture more detailed feedback and answer any questions that come up about the content. We've also built a number of features into Vidcast to help our users save time. So you'll notice that we've set the default playback speed to 1.2x, allowing viewers to get up to speed 20% faster than they could in a live meeting. We've also included thumbnails and chapters that allow viewers to easily find and jump straight to relevant moments of the video. Now it's your turn. Sign up for a free account at vidcast.io backslash waitlist. And instead of your next meeting, try Vidcast instead. Hope you love that demo. We are incredibly excited to see how our early customers are using Vidcast. Now we also know that no matter how much we utilize video, audio is one of the most important aspects of human communication. And people can't feel included when they can't hear or be heard. And audio is a particular challenge in hybrid work when there can be multiple distractions depending on your workspace. And that's specifically why we acquired Babel Labs and integrated its audio intelligence technology right into WebEx. Our background noise removal from both meetings and calls takes out distracting sounds like dogs barking or leaf blowers or keyboard sounds and so much more. But that's not all. We also released 
recently, My Voice Only. This technology focuses on the voice of the person closest to the microphone and removes any of the other speech in the room. It's great for you know, settings like contact centers or office cubicles or shared spaces where there's multiple people talking at once, but you need to make sure that you come across professional without a whole lot of disturbance and interruption. So the question we often hear is, how do you make it inclusive as an experience for everyone where no one feels left out? Now, we're solving this with a really exciting innovation, which is by using our camera intelligence technology based on a massive level of investment we've made in AI. What it does is it detects people in a room, focuses in on them, and creates individual video streams for each of those people. Now, this allows everyone to see each other's body language and facial expressions, therefore feeling so much more connected. And that way, no one feels like a second-class participant in a meeting. Let me show you how this works. Take a look. People Focus utilizes the intelligence that's built into our cameras to dynamically update the screen layout to ensure you always get the best view in a meeting, regardless of where you join from. Take this scenario. I'm working from home, having a one-on-one -on -one call with Jakobu, who is also working from home. This is the view you would probably be used to, but what happens when other people join? Now you can see that Milan has joined the call. Traditional layouts like this one would have wasted a lot of the screen space with smaller images of Milan and Jacopo. But with people focus, we can present them in a side-by-side -side portrait view, a much better experience. When Todek joins, the layout automatically adapts to the number of people. So what happens when someone joins from another meeting room? This is what you would usually get. If the main speaker is sitting at the back of the meeting room, that person can be difficult to see, making it hard for the remote participants to follow the conversation. With people focus, every meeting participant shows up equally and with face recognition clearly showing everyone's name and title. Traditionally, when sharing content, the meeting room participants appear together in one window, making it hard for us to see their individual reactions. This is because with shared content, there's less space for video participants, but People Focus will adapt the layout to make sure you see everyone. We provide the best view for every participant, making sure that no one is missing out and no one is left behind. Because everyone deserves an equal seat at the table. Now, as I mentioned before, employee well-being, safety, and culture are critical challenges in hybrid work. So we believe that your approach to hybrid, just like anyone else's, must be supportive for your employees. And you're asking us for that. A lot of companies talk about productivity, but productivity doesn't happen if you ignore employee well-being. In fact, productivity and well-being are two sides of the same coin and if I go a little bit further, productivity is a derived outcome out of well-being. And many people are feeling overworked and fatigued from remote work today. So one important innovation we launched last year is People Insights, which is built on a technology called WebEx Graph. And it provides employees with insights on how they spend their time, and it provides insights that can help them reduce fatigue and stay more engaged. Let me give you an example. Are you taking too many meetings after regular work hours? Do you have enough blocks of focus time for deep thinking? Are you spread too thin with back-to-back -back meetings and not getting enough time to think? Are you having trouble joining meetings on time? We give you valuable insights like these so that you can take control of your time and improve your work-life balance. And it's all done with an extreme emphasis on protecting every user's privacy. These insights are just for you, not for your boss, not for your company. They're designed just for you, the user. Now, we also know that people are understandably anxious about returning back to the corporate offices. And we need to make sure that they stay and feel safe and healthy. Now, one way we're doing this is with our Cisco solutions for smart buildings. Our cameras, sensors, devices, and software provide a range of capabilities for our safe return to the office. Everything from detecting occupancy rates in buildings and desk utilization rates in the offices to digital signage and wayfinding. Now, it's clear that security is top of mind as you think about these offices as well for companies worldwide. And we have seen over the course of the past year that ransomware attacks have only been on a massive rise. 
They've impacted organizations of all sizes in every geography, in every industry, both public and private sectors. So with hybrid work, security is even more of a challenge because the attack surface has increased across networks, devices, and software that we all utilize. And these threats are everywhere and they're increasing over time. This is why we believe that hybrid work requires organizations to think holistically with their security strategies and also adopt solutions where security and privacy are built in, not bolted on as an afterthought. And it's why, it's why we've invested in building and leading an open platform for secure hybrid work. Now, we believe that any of this hybrid work security solution has to start with securing the core targets for attack, the user, the devices, the networks, and the applications, regardless of what collaboration tools you're using. Once you do that, you're in a position to solve some of the biggest security pain points in the world of hybrid work. So first, you need to adopt a zero trust security mindset and ensure that nobody gets more access than they need at any point in time. It's the least privileged model. This includes determining the health of the user's device and taking appropriate action when they're out of policy. Second, as more and more applications and resources move to the cloud, organizations need a secure access Service Edge, often known as SASE. This brings network and security and fuses them together to enable users in any location, at home, in the office, or anywhere in between, to securely connect to applications in the cloud and the resources that they need. Third, organizations need to detect and respond threats better than ever before. This requires simplification, visibility, and automation across the entire portfolio so that threats don't get missed they're effectively correlated and are resolved quickly. Now lastly, because bad actors get more and more sophisticated by the day, it used to be just college student hackers, now they're nation states. Hybrid work requires advancement in threat intelligence and response. And so what is Cisco doing? We're actually investing very heavily in Talos, which is a threat intelligence service. But it's also critical that your communications and collaboration stack have deeply embedded security, privacy, and compliance capabilities natively built in. So for example, in an age where deep fake videos are pretty common, you need assurance that everyone in a meeting is in fact who they claim to be. This is especially important when you may not even have seen a person before, like in a job interview or in a doctor-patient appointment, and you want to verify their identity. That's why we launched the ability to verify the identity of every attendee with a key that can be sent to that individual off-channel, essentially a multi-factor authentication for meetings. Last but not the least, your hybrid work solution should be easy to manage. IT administrators have had an incredibly hard job, and they deserve a lot of credit for keeping their businesses running. They need frictionless administration of the entire environment, including software, devices, hardware, and facilities, and they need real-time insights to help ensure the best user experience, no matter where the employees are working from. And this is why we created WebEx Control Hub, a single pane of glass for, uh, of glass for managing all of your customers' collaboration services and devices, no matter where they are, whether in the office, the home, or anywhere in between. And for facilities teams, we have invested bringing together the power of WebEx devices, Meraki cameras and sensors, and DNA spaces to enable this concept of smart buildings that support a safe return to the office. Now, this gives actionable insights on how buildings are being used and helps manage things like foot traffic. And it provides a wealth of safety and environmental information to support corporate safety and sustainability initiatives. While I've been talking a lot about our philosophy of hybrid work, we know that events and conferences will never be the same. Because just as the future of work is hybrid, the future of events and conferences are also going to be hybrid. And organizations need modern solutions to host in-person events, virtual events, and hybrid events of any type and scale. That's why I'm so excited about our recent acquisition of Socio and its events platform, which we're adding to the WebEx suite and our existing events capability. Now, Socio fuses the high engagement levels of in-person events with the extended reach of virtual events. 
It actually improves the experience for all attendees, providing ongoing engagement with a larger audience before, during, and after an event. So by combining Socio with our existing capabilities for webinars and webcasts, and also fusing in with that audience engagement platform capabilities from Slido, we have the most comprehensive events platform technology in the industry, bar none. Now we can handle events of any size and scale, up to 100,000 participants, and we can address every type of virtual, in-person, and hybrid event, from team meetings and all-hands meetings up to multi-day, multi-track conferences and industry expos. And it all leverages WebEx's scale, security, and innovative features like real-time translations and live polling. It gives a powerful platform that makes it easy to execute events of all types and sizes on one unified tech stack. And it allows for our customers to, be, to dramatically reduce the spend on other event solutions that they might have otherwise been spending on. Now we've talked about a lot of things, but there's one more thing that's critical to the future of work, and that's connecting organizations to their customers. And the same foundational technology that powers hybrid work is required to power modern omni-channel customer experiences. This is such a strategic area because brand loyalty and customer experience are now board level conversations. And we can all relate to poor experiences when we've had a problem with a product or a service. You call and you provide information about yourself and your problem only to get placed on hold. And when you are connected with an agent, you have to repeat the information over and over and over again that you've already provided to them. And then you get transferred to yet another agent. That's an incredibly frustrating experience. So with the right technology solutions in place, we feel like there's a better way. That's what we did when we provided our brand new WebEx contact center solution a few months ago. It's built from the ground up natively for the cloud. And it's a specialized experience that takes all of the core capabilities of WebEx and adds purpose-built features to engage and service customers at a completely different level. Let's take a look at how one of our customers is using it and how they didn't miss a beat even when the pandemic hit. WebEx is a critical component to T-Mobile's collaboration ecosystem and helps us deliver on our brand promise of delivering outstanding wireless services to our customers. We've made promises to our customers. We promise that we're gonna fix your call the first time you contact us. We have enabled our team of experts to sit together in a pod to talk to each other. When we moved to a work from home model for our contact center space, that became incredibly difficult because they were no longer in the same physical space. Cisco came to us and implemented a contact center solution that really helped us streamline um, the calling experience for our frontline and external customers. Cisco unlocked cloud queuing for us, which allows us to actually pair agents with customers when they're available, regardless of geography. And that was just a huge unlock. It's a huge unlock in efficiency, and it's a big gain in, in customer satisfaction. In a matter of weeks, we were able to shut down all of our call centers and enable 12,000 agents to get back on the phone to help our customers. We know now that we don't have to physically be together because we have the tools that we need to stay in contact with each other. What Cisco allows us to do is route that call to a local call center or to a global partner overseas. And now we can also route that call to the agent's actual home. We will be able to connect our customers via any of the channels, so we can make sure that that call is answered anytime. And most importantly, we were able to serve our customers and to help them when they most needed it in a time of great uncertainty. Thank you again to T-Mobile for sharing with us the story of what they went through. And I think it's a great example of providing exceptional customer experience. And there's so much more that can be done today. That's why we're focusing on innovations that can improve engagement while reducing the number of calls in the first place. One way is through omni-channel communication interaction, so the customers can reach you in the preferred way that they have, whether it be through a chat or text or social channels or email, so they have alternatives of making connections with you without making a call. Another is a low-code, no-code tool 
for building workflows, automating customer interactions, and integrating backend systems seamlessly. What this does is it ensures that a higher percentage of customer problems can be resolved through automation before a call even becomes necessary. Now, before I wrap up, I'd like to go back to what I said at the beginning, that the future of work is definitively hybrid, and that to succeed in hybrid work, we need to treat it as a cross-functional undertaking between IT, HR, and facilities. And we need a holistic approach that addresses the multitude of technology, culture, and facilities challenges and changes that are involved in moving to hybrid work. And you need to make sure that you design your overall approach to hybrid work to be flexible, inclusive, supportive, secure, and manage the five core areas that we talked about. And we value our role as a customer's strategic and trusted partner as they make this transition across every aspect of their organization. Now, we're not done yet because I'd like to invite you all to join us at WebEx One in October, where we'll dive in even deeper and unveil what's coming next. Everything that I shared with you today, we have available in the product today. We look forward to sharing with you what's coming next. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time today. I appreciate your attention, and I hope that all of you have a great conference. Thanks so much.